Today I'm going to show you a better way to build with Postgres, one where the database is actually part of the software development lifecycle and not just part of your application's infrastructure. You see, Postgres on Neon supports code like database branching, where each branch is an isolated copy of your database and it includes both the schema and data. This is very useful because it enables you to work with realistic data without sacrificing development velocity. And today, I'm going to show you how you can automate the process of creating a branch for every preview deployment so that each preview has its own isolated database, as well as how you can leverage Neon branching as part of your local development workflow. Let's see how we can do it. So right now, I'm on GitHub and I have an open pull request. And every time a pull request is created, a GitHub Actions workflow gets triggered, which creates a preview deployment. Now, as part of this workflow, we actually create the preview deployment, a Neon branch, and we do a lot of stuff. And at the end, we actually comment on the pull request with the preview deployment URL, as well as the Neon branch that got created. So if we follow this link, we'll actually be taken to the Neon console, and this is the branch that got created. So it's called preview slash, and then the name of the Git branch, which in my case, it was feed slash add search. And we can actually go to the branches page on the console to see all of our branches. So you can see that we have a main branch and this branch is what's used for production. And we have a development branch, which we'll get to in a bit. And then our preview branch that got created as part of our preview deployment workflow. So now let's actually go to the code to see how the workflow is implemented. So I'm in my project and I have a .github slash workflows directory. And inside it, we have three workflows. We have a cleanup preview workflow, a deploy preview workflow, and a deploy production workflow. Let's take a look at the deploy preview workflow, which creates the preview deployment. So this workflow runs on pull request. And first, we're setting a bunch of environment variables. So we have the Neon project ID, which is just a variable. We have the fly API token, because I'm using fly.io as my deployment provider. And this is a secret. And then we have a GitHub token, which is actually used so that we're able to comment on the pull request. Now, this workflow has a single job called deploy preview. And what we do really is just check out into the repo, install the dependencies, and then we actually get the Git branch name and we'll use it to name our Neon branch so that when the pull request is merged, it will be easier for us to actually delete the neon branch because we won't need it. And after we get the git branch name, we actually create a neon branch. And this actually uses the create branch action, which is provided by the neon team and is maintained by us. And yeah, this action takes the project ID, the database username, the default value is neon DB owner, but if you're using something else, you can set it here. And we have an optional value called parent and you use this value to actually specify the parent branch of the branch you're going to create. So by default, it's the primary branch, but if you want to have another branch as the parent, you can easily just pass the name of the branch here and that will be the parent. And then we specify the branch name. So it will be preview slash the git branch name and we're getting the git branch name from the previous step. And then finally we pass the API key. And then once we have the newly created branch, we actually have the database URL and we get the database URL from the previous step. We run any pending database migrations that are found in code. And finally, we do a preview deployment and this uses the fly uh, PR review apps GitHub action. And we're setting the database URL secret, which again comes from the uh, create branch step. And finally, we comment on the pull request. And that's the deploy preview workflow. That's really it. And for the deploy production workflow, it's kind of similar. We check out into the code. We do, you know, PMPM PM install. Then we run any pending database migrations. And then we do a deployment uh, to production. So we run the flyctl deploy command. And finally, uh, the cleanup preview workflow, which runs whenever a pull request is like closed or merged. And what we do is we just delete the fly app as well as delete the neon branch. Now, all of this code is open source. I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out. But yeah, this is the complete workflow and how you can create the neon branch for every preview. 
Now, let's actually talk about how you can use branches in local development. Because you see, the way you do it, you actually have the Neon CLI, and the Neon CLI enables you to create branches. So you can easily just do Neon CTL branches create dash dash name, and then the name of the branch. Now for development, we actually recommend the naming convention of dev slash and then the developer name. So let's say I have a Bob on my team. So dev slash Bob would be the name of the branch. Now, once you run this command, you will immediately have a connection string you can use and you can just use this really to develop against. And the main advantage is that this branch has both the schema and data of its parent. But the cool thing is, is that the Neon development branches can actually be reset so that if let's say I'm experimenting locally and I'm making my changes, and now I actually want to refresh that branch with the latest you know, updates from the parent branch, let's say it's you know the main branch, all you need to do is also use the CLI to reset this branch. So you can do Neon CTL branches reset, and then the name of the branch. So in my case, it will be dev slash Bob, and then pass the dash dash parent flag. So what will happen is this will reset the branch and update the data. So if you made any changes to the development branch and you know your changes are now different from the ones on the parent branch, you can now just reset and the data will be updated and it just works. And that's it. This is the database branching workflow. You can try it out today by signing up for free at neon.tech. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or reach out to us in the Neon Discord. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.